unboxing and setup video. Today, I have the GoGo LX four wheeled scooter by Pride Mobility. Setting it up is a breeze. I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's get started. All you're going to need is a box cutter or a pair of scissors. You'll start by cutting the straps off. The unit arrives on a wooden pallet. We've removed it from the wooden pallet. You'll want to carefully cut the tape just a little bit and then pop it using pressure. The top we've got a safety pamphlet, the user manual which comes with the keys and a pin for the seat post and two pins for the armrest. Put that off to the side. You can see that this GoGo -Go scooter has been packaged very professionally. It's got styrofoam molding on the top of the battery box and the basket to keep it protected. Pride does the best job at packaging their products compared to any other manufacturer in my opinion. This is simply an extra set of uh, shroud covers so you can change from blue to red. Uh, basically everything that's red on the scooter can be switched out. They provide you with the colored panels for the blue color swap you know, if you want to change it up from red to blue every once in a while. You can start by removing any of the pieces that you see at the top, such as the armrest and then the battery charger. It's an XLR charger, 2 amp smart charger. The seat post is here. This is pretty much one of the only pieces that you'll have to use provided hardware to, to set the seat at your desired height. You have a couple of different options for seat height. You can put the pin here, 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 here. Looks like there's about five or four different options for height. So you've got about half inch increments between the height options. That's actually a newer feature in some of the newer models. Before it only had three. At this point, once you've re removed all of the uh, components and you're at this point with only the tiller showing and this piece of styrofoam underneath, you'll want to expose the tiller adjustment knob on the right hand side, counterclockwise rotate it, lift it up, and then rotate it back into place clockwise so that the tiller is locked into place in the upward position. At this point, you can remove the styrofoam that was resting over the seat post. Right now, the seat is actually resting upside down on the platform. And I'm gonna pick it up and show you the bottom of the seat. The bottom of the seat works with a male and female post connection. That goes into the seat post that you were looking at earlier with the height adjustment uh, slots. On the back, there is an accessory port which is covered by its styrofoam. You can use that to put a rear basket, cane holder, crutch holder, oxygen tank holder, and many other accessories that work with that one inch universal accessory port. I'll begin removing the last piece of cardboard and the last few pieces of styrofoam. I mean, look at that. They've even put styrofoam right over the battery terminal area to keep that protected. It seems like they're improving the uh, packaging process every year. They just go a little bit further by putting more and more packaging to keep the product safe. At this point, I'm gonna rotate the box because they actually instruct you to do this in the front of the box on the top, it shows you. In a diagram, step one, cut the sides of the 
short end of one of the short ends of the box and then lay it flat. And the reason why they're telling you to do that is because you can roll the scooter right out of the box as opposed to picking it up. So, I rotate. I'm gonna get my box cutter and carefully, first I'm gonna remove the corners. They're just long pieces of 90 degree angled cardboard to protect the edges from caving in. And it, that, if you don't take it out, it's harder to cut the edges. So I take it out and then I walk my blade up carefully on each side. And voila! As shown in the diagram, now the front of the box is completely cut out. And at this point, if you've got the hand strength, I'd recommend lifting the front and taking out this piece of styrofoam. I'm going to take the time to put the plastic under the front wheels so that it doesn't get caught up as I wheel it out. Now it's very important that for this next step, you prepare the scooter to roll. And it's only going to roll in freewheel mode if you have the lever disengaged from drive position into the neutral position, which is basically the same as freewheel mode. Now this scooter can freewheel itself out. The brakes are not engaged. I'm going to lift the back a little bit because the styrofoam gets stuck if you don't. And now it's out. The only thing is you can't turn it because the steering lock is activated. The steering lock is a push press um, activated kind of rotation knob that you have to push forward a little bit and then turn. To lock it, it's going to be facing up and down. To unlock it, it's going to be horizontal. And the benefit of that is when you're transporting the scooter and you have the steering wheel all the way down, you don't want it to rock back and forth in the back of your car and the trunk, potentially damage it or scratch the unit. So when it's folded down like this in the transportation uh, mode, or if you will, you just lock it, push forward, and lock. So when it's down like this in the transport mode, to prevent it from rocking, you just push forward and lock it. See now. The steering wheel is not going to be able, or the handlebars on the delta tiller are not going to be able to hit anything, really. So I'm going to bring it back up so we can continue with the unboxing. And I'm going to... All right, so we've made some room and we're going to continue with the setup. At this point, I want to go ahead and start thinking about putting the seat post on because we can't get the seat on without this post. This post is going to slide in here and one of the post pins will go in this hole all the way through and again you have several options for height so if you look at the top of the seat post here you can see this hole is going to have to line up with one of the holes up above on the seat post so i'm going to slide it in there but first i'm just going to rest it in there for a sec get my user manual bag that i showed you earlier in this bag, we have the pins and the keys found in a separate bag in the bag. You'll see that there are some uh, thin gauged ones and then three that are actually thick, thicker than the two that are thin. And you want to grab one of the thick ones. And then go ahead and I recommend starting off with one of the medium height options. So you see you've got four different slot options that give you four different heights. I would recommend maybe doing one of the medium ones just to kind of see how it works and then adjust from there. So I've lined up the hole and make sure it goes all the way through to the other side. And now we're good to put the seat on. So that is the female connector the seat post is the female connector part of this uh, connection 
For the male end, it's on the bottom of the seat. You just drop it right in, and then level the seat, and it should just fall right in. This lever on the side is used to allow the seat to rotate. It'll click and lock into place every half of a turn. So you have about eight different positions, including all the way backwards, and go full uh, 360 degrees. Very convenient. Folds down as well so that you can transport it a little easier. And it's got a rear seat storage uh, bag for the user manual or for whatever you want to put back there. Now I'm going to take the armrest and just take the plastic off. And on the back of the uh, chair, you'll see that there are some knobs which you'll have to loosen in order for the rails to slide in for each armrest. You'll notice that there are two slots there. You go back to the keys and you get the post uh, pins that were thinner. These are actually for the armrest posts. So you line it up, put the pin in, you have two options, and then tighten the knob to get that armrest to be firm. Now this is quite a good distance away from the chair. And in our showroom we like to save space because we have so many scooters, so I'm going to Go ahead and loosen it and bring this in a notch. Two notches, actually. Now I'm really saving space. And the armrests can be adjusted. You need them to be closer in or further apart. You have the options here. That's what's great about Pride. They really think about the user experience and they provide many options for the user. This particular unit has rear suspension, full suspension. It's very, very smooth. Great for going on long trips to a theme park or some sort of uh, all day outing. The battery lasts a long time. I personally have used it for an all day outing and the battery didn't even drain halfway. So at this point we have the armrests, which are flip up armrests, both of them, with adjustable and removable. Um, the only thing we have really left to do is to attach the battery, which it's a battery box. Inside of this box we have two 12 volt sealed lead acid lithium batteries. I'm sorry, sealed lead acid non-lithium batteries. To put the battery box in, you just make sure it's level. You don't want to put it in tilted forward or tilted back. Perfectly level and it should drop right in. So push it back. It sits right in there. To take it out you do the same thing. Just pick up. Drop it right in. So once the battery's in you can go ahead and take the key, put it in the ignition. There's only one way to go in. Turn it to the right. Now if you hear that beep code, that's basically telling you that the unit, it's a, it's a beep code indicating that the unit is in freewheel mode because we pushed it out of the box and we never put it back into drive mode. So you have to put it in drive mode for the scooter to work. You can see now it's not moving. That's because the brakes are engaged. It's a safety feature and the unit will not work unless the automatic brakes are engaged. Now that they're engaged, we're not getting a beep code and the unit works. It's in the fastest speed setting right now. I'm going to slow it down by turning that knob all the way to the left and demonstrate that you can um, operate this scooter with one hand, either left or right. Right now I'm using my left thumb. If I push forward, it goes forward. If I pull back, it goes backwards. Now I could do the same thing with my right thumb. Push forward, it goes backwards. Push backwards, it goes forward. Again, this is a delta tiller made for ambidextrous use. It's a brand new unit. There's a button here for the horn. And on the side of the unit, you've got the charging port to charge your, your battery with. The XLR charging port looks like this. And the charging cable looks like that. It's got three little pins that slide right in there. It's a circular connection. It does not go in any other way but the right way. On the other side, we have the switch for the lights. 
And towards the rear of the tiller, we have the fuses, which you can check or a technician can check in the event that you are getting some sort of fault or the scooter is not working properly. Now, just going back and bringing the scooter back to the position that we had it in before, I want to show you just how easy it is to assemble and disassemble the scooter. The last thing that you really need to worry about is the basket, which is super easy. Two clips, two layers of hooks, and they pop right in. There's really no wrong way to do it. Now, I noticed this one's a little bent inwards. Might have slightly bent it, which is fine. I'm just going to bend it forward a little bit. It's just a hook and slide rail system, so very easy to use. But to take it apart, you start with the chair. Make sure the unit's off. I like to fold the chair forward, grab it by the back where the accessory port is, and underneath the front, pull straight up. The next step is to just grab the battery by the handle and pull straight up, get it out of the way. Next, you take this latch. Next, you take this latch and lift up with your other hand, pull away. And that is going to separate the rear half, which has the motor, from the front. To put it in the back of a vehicle, like in a trunk, you can lower the handlebar like we showed you earlier. You can go ahead and rotate this knob counterclockwise to lower the handlebar down to about here. You want to leave a little bit of room, basically try and get it so that the seat post is level with the front of the tiller, and then tighten it. Reason being is if you let it fall all the way down, if this handlebar rests on top of the battery terminal connection here, it could scratch your handlebars. And to prevent it from swinging like we talked about earlier, just in the very front, twist that knob and it's locked now. So in the front, we have that spring-loaded twist action uh, knob to keep it from shaking in the back of your trunk. And if, once you're ready to put it back together, you just undo all the steps, or you know, take the steps backwards, if you will, bring the steering wheel back up, lock it into place. Now, putting this thing back together is pretty simple once you've done it a few times. Here, there are two hooks. And on this bar, you've got the same green tape indicators that are going to line up with these two hooks in my other hand from the front part. So I'm going to line up those hooks with that bar as best I can and just let them fall right on top. The rest is basically just gravity taking over and connecting them together. Once you hear that click, it's back together again. I'll show you one more time just how easy that is. These green indicators need to be in line with the hooks that have the green indicators on them. And I'm just going to line them up and let gravity take over. Next step, take the battery box by the handle. Remember, keep it level when you're dropping it in. Last but not least, grab the seat, get the mail connector lined up, drop it in. Let it just level itself out and slide in. At this point, we've assembled, disassembled, and showed you everything about this scooter. To learn more about this scooter, go to mobilityscootersdirect.com. I'm Sergio. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.